Hi, uh, welcome back to the architecture track. Up next, we have Chiamaka with the art of clean code. Uh, really exciting talk. Take it away, Chiamaka. All right, thank you for having me today. I'm super excited to be here. This happens to be my first time speaking at the conference. So today I'm going to be presenting on the art of clean code. So this is just a brief introduction about me. So my name is Chema Kokinwa. I'm a software engineer. I've worked in the FinTech space for about two years now. I'm passionate about Java, women in technology. I'm also a developer advocate for Unstuck Africa and a community organizer for JVM Nigeria. So I've had to speak at a couple of conferences like the Java Two Days, the GitHub Africa Meetup, the London Java Community, and the Techno Day Conference. So today I'll be speaking on the art of clean code. And this is just an important quote from Martin Fowler. And he says, anyone can write code that computer can understand, but good programmers write code that humans can understand. And this for me is one of the most important reasons on why I had to talk about the art of clean code today. Because when it comes to clean coding, you're not just writing code for yourself. You're writing code for others that's going to be able to maintain that code base either when you're not going to end up working on it at some later time and it's really important that you make sure that you're writing code that other people would be able to understand so when it comes to clean code i'd say clean code is easily maintainable it's easily readable it takes less cognitive effort to understand and it's usually concise. So I think of three words when it comes to clean coding. Clean code is simple, it's understandable and maintainable. So when we want to look at the characteristics of clean code, like how can I tell that I'm writing clean code? First of all, clean code is easy to read it's focused because it's actually just doing one thing. Clean code is tested. And this is because unit testing is one of the major benefits when it comes to writing clean code. And clean code is solid. There are design principles that help us guide the way we code in, every, in our everyday work. So the solid principles are the single responsibility principle where your code is able to do one thing and then one thing only. So when it comes to writing clean code, you want to ask yourself, how can I write clean code? And for me, it starts with naming. Naming is the fundamental understanding required to write clean code because everything in our code has names, starting from our classes to our variables and down to our functions. If a class is not named properly, it leaves people guessing, what exactly is this person trying to do? And the name of your variable or class should always be simple and meaningful. And one should be able to understand it and identify its purpose. So when it comes to writing meaningful names, you want to use names that can be pronounced well. You want to use names that are descriptive, names that are clear and easily defined. You want to use names that are able to identify a true purpose. So when we're staring at this example right here, we can see that a variable was initialized with a letter. And for me, I'm thinking, what exactly does A represent? What exactly does X represent? So we can see A is initialized with 100, but what exactly does 100 mean? But looking over at this other example, you can see a variable name with max score is easily identifiable, it's easily understandable that, oh, 100 means the maximum score or administrator is simply defined by an admin role. And these are the kind of things you want to think about when it comes to writing clean code. One of the hardest part, especially for most developers, is finding the suitable name that identifies the purpose of what they are trying to achieve. And for me, I try to question myself and say, what exactly am I trying to do in the first place? And that just guides me on knowing 
what kind of names to use to name my classes or my variables. So it's a common convention to use noun for classes or variable names. So we can see here, instead of having handle accounts, you can have account handler as the name. And it's also advisable to use searchable names. So we can see here that that the length of the student is actually less than seven. But what exactly does seven mean? So for variables like this, it's always good to have them as constants and give them variable names. So you can see here that seven actually represents your mass classes per student. And it just makes it more readable and more meaningful for any developer to understand. So when we're writing clean code, we're also talking about functions. Functions should be able to do one thing. They should also be able to follow the single responsibility principle. So most of the time when you have large number or large lines of code, in your functions, you want to be able to reduce it and have them turn into smaller functions instead. In that way, it's easy to test them. And it's in that way, it's easy for someone to read. You also want to keep your arguments as low as possible. I had advised between maybe three to four arguments per function, because usually when you have an increased number of arguments in your function, it just means it's breaking the single responsibility principle because then you're having to do multiple things in that function. Functions should be small. It's also a convention to have verbs to identify your functions because functions are more of like actions. So for instance, instead of having accounts, you can use get accounts or you can use fetch, just something that's able to identify what exactly you're trying to do with your functions. So we can see here that we have two examples of a function, and we can see that this happens to be much more readable because we have fewer lines of code. And there's an abstraction whereby instead of having the data that's being called in the method, you can just abstract them into another smaller method and it's being called here. But on this other end, you can see more lines of code, which makes it really, really hard to read. Like for me, looking at this too, I kind of understand the ones with the fewer line of code more, and they just seem much more meaningful and much more readable for me. Okay, so when it comes to comments, a lot of people like to have comments in their code because they feel like comments help to describe or define what exactly they're trying to do. So for me, I feel like your code is your best documentation. Instead of having comments, try to write code that is meaningful. That way, you'd see that you don't really have much use for having comments in your code. You only want to use comments when you're trying to provide more clarifications on what exactly you're trying to do, or maybe you have abbreviations in your code and you want the person to be able to understand what exactly that means. And in that way, it'd be much more advisable for you to use comments. Another thing is avoid commenting out code. I see a lot of people do this a lot, commenting out code because they feel, oh, okay, I might forget what this code is. And then, or probably they feel like they want to use it much more later. But I'd say it's always best to avoid commenting out code. Most of the time you realize you might not really need it and it's always good to take it out in the first place. And that way you're making your code much more readable. And the next person who would have to work on it doesn't have to decide what exactly you're trying to do in that space. And then when it comes to your classes, your class name should show its responsibility. It's always advisable to keep classes really small or as short as possible, because most of the time you tend to see classes that span out to a long line of code. And then you want your class to be able to have only one responsibility. And in that way, it's following the single responsibility principle, whereby it doesn't really have to change as much. And then another thing too is also testing. Testing is an important factor when it comes to writing code, because in that way, when you have testing your code, your codes are less prone to bugs. And when you're writing tests, you should also be able to have one assertion per test. 
Your text should be able to be executed within a short period of time and as also as fast as possible. And the good thing about having functions or smaller functions is that it makes it a lot easier to test your code. Your test becomes very, very neat, especially when you have other people that have to go through it or review your code. So another important thing is why should you care as a developer whether you're writing clean code or not? So the most important thing is teamwork. Like I said earlier, when you write code, you're not just writing it for yourself. You're writing it for other people that are also going to be able to work in that code base just like you did. You want to make sure that your code is easy to read. You want to make sure that your code is easy to understand. And you also want to make sure that it's also maintainable. So in that way, it makes it better for you to work as a team when you're writing good code. Reusability. For me, I like to reuse codes that I find, you know, very meaningful, especially when I know what exactly that code is trying to do. I can then reuse it. And I think that goes the same for every other software engineer. When you're writing clean code, you're making your code more reusable. You're making people want to have it, to use it more. And it's just very, very good for your team. And also clean coding leads to growth. Once you start practicing clean coding, you start learning a lot of things. You start understanding things a little bit more better. So it makes it easier for you to grow as a developer. And the fact that you're not just writing it for yourself, but you're also teaching other people how to write clean code. And these are just some of the most important reasons why you should care about writing clean code. So here are some of the resources I recommend for starting out. A lot of people usually don't know how to start or when to write clean code. But I'd say the Martin or the Robert Martin book on clean code is actually one of the best resources out there that there is. Medium articles also happen to be a lot more helpful. And there are also a lot more books that you can actually use when writing clean code. And this is a, an important quote too by Robert Martin. And it says, it's not just enough for you to write code well, the code has to be kept clean over time. Leave the campground cleaner than you find it. And this is just one important rule that no matter where you're going to, no matter what code base you're working on, it's always important to leave it better for the next person that's gonna happen to work in it. So here comes the end of my presentation today. I really hope you did enjoy it and I'm super excited to be here once again. Hi, um, thank you so much for that great presentation. Having clean code is always the, probably like the number one thing to be able to go back into your application and figure out what's going on and for, for code to actually like continue to live on. So th thank you so much for um, informing us of that um, and, and teaching us. So we're going to uh, have a Q&A with uh, Chamaka, if you have any questions, uh, please head over to the Slack channel and you'll find a link there to a Zoom session where you can ask Chamaka questions and talk to her and, uh, and continue the conversation. So we're gonna take uh, a small break in the meantime and we'll be right back uh, at the next scheduled presentation with Dodd Pfeiffer and Partha on how, to sp how Spring Cloud Gateway uh, orchestrated our app modernization. So I love Spring Cloud Gateway. You can't miss that talk. So uh, see you back in a couple of minutes. Um, enjoy your Q&A and a short break, and we'll see you soon. Uh, be right back.